Hello everyone, and welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into a topic that's essential to understand if you're into computers or planning to build your own system, the difference between legacy boot and UEFI. But before we jump into the details, if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you won't miss any of our future videos. Legacy Boot and UEFI, or Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, are two different methods by which your computer's firmware, the software embedded on the motherboard, initializes the hardware components and launches the operating system. But to truly understand the difference, let's start with the basics. What is BIOS? BIOS stands for Basic Input Slash Output System. It's a fundamental piece of software stored on a small chip on your computer's motherboard. BIOS is responsible for initializing and testing the hardware components during the boot process. So, how does BIOS work? When you turn on your computer, the BIOS kicks into action. It performs a power on self test, post, where it checks if all the essential hardware components like the processor, memory, and storage devices are functioning properly. Power on self test. When you power on or restart your computer, the BIOS begins its operation by executing a series of diagnostic tests known as the power on self test, POST. POST checks the integrity and functionality of key hardware components such as the CPU, memory, RAM, storage drives, and peripheral devices. If any issues are detected during POST, error messages are displayed to alert the user. Initialization and Configuration After completing the POST, the BIOS initializes essential hardware components to prepare them for use by the operating system. This includes identifying and configuring devices such as hard drives, optical drives, USB ports, graphics cards, and other peripherals connected to the system. The BIOS stores this configuration data in a small amount of non-volatile memory called CMOS, Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor, or NVRAM, Non-Volatile Random Access Memory. Boot Device Selection Once the hardware initialization is complete, the BIOS determines the boot device from which the operating system will be loaded. It typically searches for a bootable device in a predefined order, such as the computer's internal hard drive, external USB drive, CD-slash-DVD drive, or network boot server. Loading and Executing the Boot Loader After identifying the boot device, the BIOS locates the Master Boot Record, MBR, or the EFI System Partition, ESP, on the storage device. The MBR or ESP contains the boot loader, which is a small program responsible for loading the operating system kernel into memory. The BIOS transfers control to the boot loader program, effectively initiating the boot process. Hand over to the operating system. Once the bootloader has loaded the operating system kernel into memory, the BIOS relinquishes control of the system to the operating system. From this point onward, the operating system takes over and manages the computer's resources, including hardware devices and software applications. Let me explain simply when you turn on your computer, the BIOS kicks into action. It performs a power on self test post, where it checks if all the essential hardware components like the processor, memory, and storage devices are functioning properly. Next, BIOS searches for the boot device, usually a hard drive or SSD, where the operating system is installed. Once it finds the boot device, BIOS loads the first sector of the storage device, known as the master boot record, MBR, into memory. And this is where Legacy Boot comes into play. In Legacy Boot, the boot process continues with the master boot record, MBR, containing a bootloader, such as Grub for Linux or NTLDR for Windows. On the other hand, with UEFI, the boot process is more advanced. Instead of relying on the master boot record, MBR, UEFI uses the EFI system partition, ESP, to store bootloaders and initiate the boot process. UEFI, Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, works as a bridge between the computer's firmware and the operating system, 
managing the initial stages of the boot process and providing an environment for the operating system to start. Here's a detailed look at how UEFI works. Boot process with UEFI. Power on and firmware initialization. When the computer is powered on, the UEFI firmware initializes the basic hardware components, such as the CPU, memory, and system buses. This phase is known as the security, SEC, phase. Pre-EFI initialization, PEI. The PEI phase initializes the rest of the hardware necessary to boot the system, such as memory controllers and other critical components. It also prepares the system for the next phase by creating a memory environment where the main firmware can operate. Driver Execution Environment, DXE The DXE phase loads and executes UEFI drivers for the hardware components. These drivers provide the necessary interfaces to the hardware, allowing the firmware to manage and utilize various devices. During this phase, UEFI boot services are available, which provide a set of interfaces for tasks such as memory management, event handling, and accessing file systems. Boot Device Selection, BDS The BDS phase identifies and selects the boot device. This is where the UEFI firmware scans the available bootable devices, example hard drives, SSDs, USB drives, for a valid EFI bootloader file, typically named BOOTX64.EFI for 64-bit systems. Transient System Load, TSL In this phase, control is transferred from the firmware to the operating system's bootloader. The bootloader, which is a small program stored on the boot device, begins the process of loading the operating system kernel into memory and initializing it. Runtime Services even after the operating system has taken over, UEFI runtime services remain available. These services include functions for date and time management, NVRAM access, and other system-level services that the operating system can use. What is the difference between UEFI and Legacy Boot? The primary differences between UEFI, Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, and Legacy Boot, BIOS Boot, lie in their design, functionality, and capabilities. Here's a detailed comparison highlighting the key differences. 1. Firmware Interface UEFI UEFI is a modern firmware interface that provides a more advanced and flexible environment for booting the operating system. It includes features like a graphical user interface, mouse support, and a modular design that allows for easy updates and extensions. Legacy Boot BIOS BIOS is the traditional firmware interface that has been used for decades. It provides a simpler, text-based interface for system configuration and boot management. 2. Boot Process UEFI The UEFI boot process involves initializing hardware, executing UEFI drivers, and loading the operating system from the EFI system partition ESP, using a bootloader. UEFI can execute code directly from disk partitions formatted with FAT file systems. Legacy Boot, BIOS The BIOS boot process includes performing a power-on self-test, post, loading the master boot record, MBR, from the bootable device, and executing the bootloader code in the MBR to load the operating system. 3. Partitioning Scheme UEFI, uses the GUID partition table, GPT, which supports larger disks, greater than 2.2 TB, and allows for up to 128 primary partitions. GPT includes redundancy and CRC checks to improve data integrity. Legacy Boot, BIOS uses the Master Boot Record, MBR, partitioning scheme, which supports disks up to 2.2 TB and a maximum of 4 primary partitions, or three primary partitions and one extended partition containing multiple logical drives. Four security features. UEFI includes advanced security features such as Secure Boot, which ensures that only trusted software, signed with a recognized certificate, can run during the boot process, protecting against boot time malware and unauthorized operating systems. Legacy Boot BIOS lacks advanced security features like Secure Boot.
security is primarily managed by the operating system rather than the firmware. 5. Boot Time UEFI typically offers faster boot times due to its ability to initialize hardware in parallel and more efficient boot management. Legacy Boot BIOS often has slower boot times due to sequential hardware initialization and the older boot management process. 6. User Interface UEFI can provide a more user-friendly graphical interface with mouse support, making it easier to navigate and configure settings. Legacy Boot BIOS provides a text-based interface with keyboard-only navigation, which can be less intuitive and harder to use for some users. 7. Extensibility UEFI, designed to be modular and extensible. New drivers and applications can be added without replacing the entire firmware, and updates can be applied more easily. Legacy Boot, BIOS less flexible and modular. Adding new functionality often requires more extensive firmware updates or modifications. 8. Compatibility UEFI supported by all modern operating systems, including Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. UEFI can also run in Compatibility Mode, CSM, or Compatibility Support Module, to support older BIOS-based operating systems. Legacy Boot, BIOS primarily used by older operating systems and hardware. It remains compatible with older software and systems that do not support UEFI. 9. Error Handling and Recovery UEFI offers better error handling and recovery capabilities due to its modularity and ability to access more system resources during the boot process. Legacy Boot BIOS more limited in error handling and recovery options, relying on simpler mechanisms to address boot issues. In summary, UEFI represents a significant advancement over Legacy Boot BIOS, offering enhanced features better security, faster boot times, and greater flexibility. While legacy boot is still used for compatibility with older systems and software, UEFI is the standard for modern computing, providing a robust platform for current and future technological developments. So, to sum it up, BIOS is the basic firmware that initializes the hardware and starts the boot process. Legacy Boot and UEFI are two different methods of booting your system, with UEFI offering more advanced features and flexibility. And that's a wrap for today's video. I hope you found it informative. If you did, we jump don't into forget the details, to give it a thumbs up and here, share it with your friends. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and Thanks turn on notifications watching, so you don't miss any of our future videos.